are all healthy and well. Uh, and Merry Christmas. <laughs>
Well, welcome. Whether Emmanuel is your church home, you're seeking a church home, or you're just visiting with us this evening, we welcome you to spend this holy hour with us where Jesus Christ is host, and we are all God's family. And what a great way it was to ring in this very special service with our bell choir. Like most of you, I am guessing that this may be the first Christmas Eve you've ever not worshiped in church. And I know that's certainly true for me, but I'm encouraged by all of you, the many, many people who are sharing their gifts and talents with us this evening to make this a very special evening. Just a reminder, later on in the service, we're each going to light a candle as um, we sing Silent Night. Please take a moment to locate one if you don't have one with you right now. Before we sing, I will ask you to dim your lights and make sure your camera is on and put your device in gallery mode, gallery view. And I thought I'd take a minute right before we start for us each to uh, try gallery view. If you're on a um, Mac or an, uh, um, a PC, there's a little um, thing in the top, that uh, the top right corner, and if you click it, you can click gallery view, and it will show next to the main, where I'm speaking, you should be able to see um, many people that we, um, that are on tonight. If their cameras aren't on, you'll just see their name. If you're on a phone, the way to put yourself into gallery view is simply to swipe your phone from right to left. And that is if you, if you can actually view us, if you're not just calling in from a landline. So um, I hope uh, that you will put yourself in gallery view so you can see us all lighting our candles during silent night. You can even move uh, and make the gallery view bigger by pulling, pulling over and making the shared screen a bit smaller at the time if you wish. So um, I hope you'll all enjoy participating in that. Um, one last thing, our microphones are going to be muted to cut down on confusion um, during the entire service. Um, we won't be unmuting them during silent night during to, due to the internet variation from household to household, but we'll unmute at the end of the service for one last Merry Christmas to one another. And now let's move into a time of worship. Each week we prepare ourselves by reminding our minds and our bodies, um, letting them know that even though we're still physically in our homes, we're now gathering as the body of Christ and entering onto holy ground. We do this by placing our right hand on our hearts and our left hand on our bellies and breathing in slowly to a count of four and then exhaling to a count of more than four. Once again, we breathe in the presence of God. And then we breathe out any stress or anxiety that we hold. And a final breath in of God's peace. And then exhaling any leftover worry that we might be feeling right now. We remember that no matter where we are, that where we were just moments ago, that God is with us, ever drawing us near in the spirit of oneness and love. If you have a candle on your altar or near you, take a moment and light it as I light the candles on our altar. Will you pray with me? A wondrous God of the stars, 
We come tonight with breathless wonder to see the babe who will change our lives. You have touched the earth this night with your unconditional love. Touch us. Touch our hearts and our minds and our souls. May we never tire of this story. May we ne never take it for granted. Make this night magical again to us, Lord. Amen. And now, will you join me in singing our introit, Come Let Us Adore Him. Please join me in our call to worship. We count it in mere hours now. Soon the first pains of labor will be felt. Soon the light will shine in the darkness. Soon the baby will be born. Soon God will once again break into our lives, coming in a way that is expected yet unusual challenging our expectations and calling us to see life differently. Let's join together in our opening prayer. God of birth, God of light, in this time of song and prayer and silence, reawaken in us the awe of Christmas. As we hear again the story of a young woman and a surprising visitor, remind us that we are called to respond to you in unexpected ways. And when we leave this place, May we be willing to sing praises for a young woman who said yes and the birth that we prepare to celebrate. We pray in the name of the child who is even now starting to push from the womb, who would later show us the way to God's vision of peace on earth. Amen. <clears throat> Emmanuel, God with us, 
interrupt and open our eyes to the hope of this night, that we might catch a glimpse of your glory in the simplicity of these moments. May your light shine. Emmanuel, God with us, interrupt and soften our hearts to the peace of this hour, that we might turn toward you and have the way prepared in us for your coming. May your light shine. Emmanuel, God with us, interrupt and open our minds to truly listen to all whom speak and sing this evening, that we might hear your joy ring out from many lips. May your light shine. <clears throat> Emmanuel, God with us, interrupt and fill our spirits with the courage to admit when we are lost and the insight to recognize that we have been found by your love for us. May your light shine. Emmanuel, God be with us, with eyes open and hearts soft and minds listening and spirits full. We rejoice that you interrupt what we have in mind in order to bring Christ into being, something more than we dare imagine. May your light shine. Benjamin Bear was tucked in his warm bed, but he couldn't fall asleep. When will Christmas finally be here? He asked Mother Bear. You have to be patient, Benjamin, said Mother, but tomorrow you can open the first door on your Advent calendar, and we will begin our journey to Bethlehem. How far is it to Bethlehem? asked Benjamin. Mother Bear smiled. Twenty-four stories away. And then it's really Christmas? Mother Bear nodded and gave Benjamin a big kiss on the nose. Good night now, little one. The star with the tail. On December 1st, just before bed, Benjamin Bear opened the first door on the advent calendar. Oh, look, a star with a tail, he cried. Once upon a time, there was a little bear just like you. He discovered a star one night shining in the sky above his cave. He had never seen such a star, bright star before. It was a very special star indeed, because the little bear, full of curiosity, felt compelled to follow it. He ran over hills and mountains, swam across the wide river, and climbed the steepest rocks. But the little bear finally got so tired that he had to stop and rest. He laid down and fell asleep. When he awoke, he sprang up in a panic. My star! Where is my star? I lost my star, he cried. How surprised he was to see the tail of the star shining brighter than the sun. The little bear set out again. 
relieved and even more determined to follow the wondrous star. When Mother Bear finished the story, Benjamin pointed to the star. Look at it shine, he said happily. Yes, said Mother. Remember that God is with you night and day to show you the way. This is how our Advent story began. Tonight we come to the conclusion and we come to the night we've been waiting for, Christmas Eve. On December 24th, Benjamin opened the last door and saw a manger. As the little bear, the lamb, approached the warm stable, they saw the child lying in a manger. The child opened his arms to the little bear laughing, and the little bear's heart was filled with joy. Everyone who the little bear had met during the journey gathered before the manger, the animals, the beggar, the robber, the old man, the blind man, and the king and above all of them shone the star. Benjamin sighed happily. It's finally here, mother, he said. It's finally Christmas. Mother Bear kissed Benjamin on the cheek and said, Merry Christmas. We have finally arrived at Christmas Eve. Enjoy the Christmas season. Merry Christmas.
Our first lesson is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, 2, 6, and 7. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They shall dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment, with justice, from henceforth even forever. The, re the zeal of the Lord is host to perform this. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, 26 through 38. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and he shalt, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord of God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Thank you. 
The Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Sirius, the governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up to Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of David, lineage, house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days of the, were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sure afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger. Suddenly there, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good wealth towards men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now, even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that they heard in wondered as those which were told unto them by shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them.
The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are coming to worship him. When Herod the king heard these, of these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least amongst the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Our PowerPoint froze. You're up. Will you pray with me? Holy ministry, holy mystery, we invite you into our conversation tonight. Speak through these humble words and tell our hearts what we long to hear. Amen. Tonight, as we hear the story of Mary and Joseph's journey to the manger, I'm relating to the story in a way that's rather new for me. I can imagine Mary just heaven, heavy laden with child jostling up and down roughly on the back of a burrow for perhaps up, upwards toward a full week on the couple's journey from Nazareth, feeling like Bethlehem would just never arrive. Picture it, Mary, already showing signs of labor, holding on, keeping calm only by the vision of a safe room and a soft bed ahead where she can finally rest and finish labor in peace at long last. And then when Joseph finally guides the two of them into the little town, they find that the place of rest that their hearts so longed for is not what they imagined at all. After the long journey where they arrive, it's still a rather inhospitable place. The stable, a pile of hay, and a few animals standing around to warm the place. Definitely not the scene Mary had pictured in her mind. 
not what she had hoped for. And yet, Jesus came anyway, right there in the midst of it. This year has felt like that for many of us. It's been a long journey that seemed like it would just never end. The pandemic, the protests, the masks, the change in all of our routines, the working from home, the learning from home, missing friends and family, postponed celebrations. And while we're all feeling these losses, we've watched many folks just turning on one another, beginning to extend the love and kindness that we're all craving. And yet, we've held on through it all. And I remember thinking most of the year, if I can just hold on till Christmas comes, then we'll be back in the church with the candles and the carols and the music and the poinsettias. Then we can celebrate and see friends and family again. Then we can hug our loved ones. Then. I will feel the Christ spirit that seems to have disappeared from life. And like Mary, ready or not, we finally arrived at Bethlehem. And like Mary, there's still no place in the inn. The pandemic still rages. The church is still closed and we can't see family. And yet, here comes Jesus, right in our midst, anyway, right here. Throughout our Advent, our scripture lessons have been instructing us to wait and to watch and to wonder. And that's really good advice. Because at the beginning of the year, there was so much confusion. Do you remember it? Back that far, it was just crazy with everything swirling around, the new unknown disease, the stay at home orders, conflicting health advice, fires out west and hurricanes down south and folks everywhere protesting everywhere else. And as we each sat in our homes wondering what in the world is happening to us and where is God in the midst of all this? God was there. God was whispering, be still and know that I am God. And tiny God sparks started to fly about unnoticed at first. And ever so slowly, the confusion started to settle and things started to become more evident as we indeed did watch and did wait. Things like what we value and what we don't. Things we thought were so important became less so when it meant having to struggle to do them and so important things just started to fall away. And those things that actually are important, our family, our faith, our church, and caring for others, well, we found new and sometimes even better ways to accomplish them. Inconsequential relationships have fallen away and those that matter most, well, I've heard from so many of you and seen in my own life, those have deepened. We've learned new hobbies, new skills, New ways to talk to God right from our own living rooms. Yes, our journey has been fraught with heavy labor on our way to Bethlehem. But the God sparks are flying everywhere. And love is being born right here, right now, right in our midst. Can you feel it? And all God's children. We said, amen. Will you pray with me?
God of our salvation, we come to you on this wondrous night to gather and to lift up your name with friend and family and stranger alike. In the beginning, your creative word began with a word, and tonight your creation continues with your word made flesh. On this holiest of nights, we join the everlasting chorus saying, glory to God in the highest, great is your name in all the earth. Like Mary, we ponder these things in our hearts and wonder how you could love us so much as to actually become one of us, one with us. We remember these stories this evening that remind us of your steadfast love, that affirm that you have never and will never ever give up on your children. Thank you for your steadfast presence in our lives. And yet, even on this night on which we celebrate the fulfillment of your love, we recognize that there are many who are still waiting for fulfillment, the fulfillment of adequate food and shelter, the fulfillment of peace and the end of violence, the fulfillment of reprieve from the fierce grip of grief, the fulfillment of a restoration of a broken relationship, the fulfillment of the renewing of heart, mind, or body, of healing from a chronic illness, of an end to substance abuse. Giving God, give us the courage to do your work in the world and to share the peace coming to us in the manger this evening. We pray this night especially for those who have traveled to be with families, for those who have lost loved ones in the past year, for those who struggle with mental illness, for those who fight alcoholism, for those who will be traveling in the coming days and weeks, for those who work on Christmas, especially first responders, medical workers, police and emergency personnel, for those who can't make it home for Christmas. Hear us, we pray, oh God. Restore us and make your face to shine that we might be saved in all that we do and in all that we are. Send your spirit to send us forward with the majesty of this night and to share the grace we find with everyone we encounter. This we pray in the name of your son who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be our name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When the shepherds heard the good news the angels brought, they responded by going to see God's great gift of Jesus and by glorifying and praising God. In the same way, we respond to the amazing things God is doing when we bring our gifts to praising God and giving God the glory. Let us remember the church with our Christmas offering this season. The moment has come to dim the lights and to put our devices into gallery view as we prepare to welcome the baby Jesus with the carol of Silent Night. Tonight, we light our Christmas candles as a symbol of love that is Christ Jesus, the Holy One who brings light into our darkness, wholeness into the broken, hope to the fearful, comfort to the sorrowful, and love to all humanity. Let us see the light that we might share it with our neighbor. Let us light our candles 
from the Christ life. Let us light that so that another, that this house of worship and prayer, joy, and peace might be a beacon for all of the world to see. Give us the light that is Jesus Christ. Let us sing together. go forward with love in our hearts and joy on our lips knowing that Christ the Savior is indeed born. Merry Christmas to all. Christmas to all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Absolutely. We were so sad to miss hers. Well, I will make sure we see it on Sunday. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Amazing job. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you. So awesome. So good to see you all. Have a safe and happy holiday. You too. You too. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah, I know. She's oh, awesome. Nice. Yes, I was. All right. Are you leaving? Yeah. <laughs>